The history of modern Nigerian creative writing cannot be complete without the name of a certain young man called Elnathan John. Born in the year 1982 in Kaduna, Kaduna State, Elnathan John graduated with a law degree from the famous Amadu Bello University, Zaria, in 2007. As one with passion for writing, Elnathan John's short story, Bayan Lai, was shortlisted for the prestigious Kane Prize for African Writing in 2013. In 2015, another short story of his, titled Flying, was again shortlisted for the same Kane Prize for African Writing. His writings have been published in so many magazines and journals across the globe and have enjoyed positive reviews too. Ernathan John is a Civitella Ranieri Fellow. Apart from being a satirical columnist on Sunday Trust newspaper, he has also spoken regularly on Nigerian literature, media and politics. Please join us in welcoming in our 15-minute studio a satirist, lawyer, writer of international repute, an astute voice for change and a journalist par excellence, Nathan John. We can do Okay, that was you, really. <laughs> you were trying to check, was that me? Was it life? <laughs> yeah, well, is that me? It was you, really. Okay, welcome to 15 Minutes. Thank Sydney, you very Nathan. much. It's my pleasure and, to be um, here. I don't know where to start from, but I know you're a trained lawyer, and um, I was yes. wondering, how did you get this, uh, how did you take off on your journey to the literary world? Well, I graduated from the Nigerian Law School and started practicing law and I did that for two years. Uh, I got very quickly dissatisfied with the pace of the Nigerian legal system, uh, uh, being very restless. I, I moved on to something else and then I was dissatisfied with that too and decided, well, I'd been writing on the side for a while and I decided to just take it more seriously and, and I told myself it, it probably is possible to do this full time. But then I, I didn't think it through and once I resigned in 2012 and decided to write full time, for the first month I was really scared and I thought, my goodness, I've made a really, really silly mistake. Yeah, but you know, one month came and I didn't starve. The next month I didn't starve and I thought, well, you know, I actually could do this. And I've been writing full time since then. And you're doing so well. Some of your stories are really mind-boggling. And um, I tried to read one just recently, flying. And I was like, um, did you live in the orphanage? How <laughs> <laughs> what in your you know, childhood propelled you into writing that? Well, for the story flying, we got, which got shortlisted for the Kane Prize this year, I, I often say that it's, it began with me flying in my own sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, well, which aircraft did you use? <laughs> I, I thought of it and, and I wondered, I, 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 I can't be the only one who flies in, this, in sleep. And, but then I thought of it deeply and, and tried to connect it to bigger, larger themes. Uh, and that was how that story was born. All right. Um, having more than 10 solid work published is Nomin Tax. And then uh, being recognized, the Ken Award, like you said, is also um, another very uh, uh, st uh, um, stage I must congratulate you for. But I'm um, wondering, um, what are those qualities that um, distinguish one out as um, a writer of repute? Well, I wouldn't call myself a writer of repute, so <laughs> maybe, but, but I think that... But award-winning writer. To, to, well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that to be a serious writer, which, which is the term I would use, one has to take their craft seriously. And for me, being a writer begins with being a reader. And that you cannot, you will always produce what you consume. And the quality of your consumption will show in your production. The better you read, the better you write. And, and I know that there was a turning point in my writing, and that began with the turning point in my reading, and the kind of things I read, the kind of subjects I was interested in, the, the kind of writers I was reading, how broadly I, I, I extended my reading, you know, 
ultimately affected the kind of writing that I did. All right, you seem uh, so immersed in satiric writing. Is that because you also read a lot of it? How did you get into satire? Yes. Um, so in 2011, I was I was asked by by a, a publication that was revived, uh, the Daily Times, to write a column. Now I know that by the Peter Inahoro, who is often called Peter Pan, is one of our satire greats, and you know he'd written how to be a Nigerian. And I wanted to start in the same publication that he'd written, but decades after. And I thought, okay, what do I do with, with this column? Nigerians are used to screaming, shouting, writing articles. Everyone has an article. And I thought, how, how best to convey the ridiculousness in our society? You know, and I thought, well, I'll do satire. Yes, I was reading a lot of satire. I was interested in satire in Nigeria, from Peter Pan to, to the others who came after him, to satire in, in, in outside Nigeria, you know, there's Private Eye, for example, in the UK, and many others like that, which I was, which I was reading. And so the more I read that, the more I got interested in, in satire as a means of, of social criticism, as a means of talking about politics in a way that puts a mirror in front of society and people so that they can see themselves, as opposed to preaching to them and pontificating. Okay, that's um, a, a good one, and you're doing well with it. Now, I want to take you back to the award. Uh, yeah, the, the nomination, you got a Ken nomination, yes. and um, on a very light note, I know you got uh, 500. Euro. <laughs> 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 and um, I know you spent 400 euro out of the 500. 400 pounds. Okay, 500 pounds, pounds, pounds yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> out of it. And then he's left uh, 100 pounds. Just 100 pounds left. Okay, did you come with it? Well, you didn't tell me I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have copied it. <laughs> All right. Every career has its challenges. <laughs> and um, uh, like you said, when you started, it was a, a little bit overwhelming. Yes. I'd like to know, really, what are your own challenges beyond that as you write? It is a challenge to live in Nigeria, period. So that's the first big challenge. Everything is in your face. It's, it's, Nigeria is a very intense country. And there are two sides to that. It either gives you so much material or it frustrates you. And as a writer, you can turn it into anything you want. But there's also the challenge, I think, for many writers, apart from me, of where to put your work out. So publishing, for example. Even publishers in Nigeria have huge challenges with selling books, with distribution, and things like that. And so when the writer crosses the hurdle of writing, he has to cross the hurdle, or she has to cross the hurdle of publishing. And so that, that's a whole different animal, publishing. Um, and I think that Nigeria really, really needs more support for publishing. Many publishing houses are going down, many publishing houses are struggling. And I think that it is important that people support publishers, government supports publishers, so that we are able to keep the houses that produce our books, that are the custodians of our literature alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope um, it will we'll get there. Now, I must Hopefully. celebrate you and say congratulations again. Just this week, uh, you got a, a nomination for your book actually was selected by the Abadas American Booksellers um, Association. Yes. And uh, I must say congratulations. And Thank the book you. is uh, Born on a Tuesday, right? Yes. My novel is titled Born on a Tuesday. Okay. You want to talk to us about it? Yes. It's a, it's a novel set in northern Nigeria. And I, I'm very interested in northern Nigeria as simply because a lot of our literature, especially contemporary literature, does not talk about northern Nigeria, apart from being this place where Boko Haram exists. And so for me, I'm interested in the smaller issues, you know, in, for example, in pastoralists and herders, for example. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, in my novel, I speak about a young Muslim man who is trying to grow up and find his way in society in northern Nigeria. He's moving from father figure to father figure and trying to find for himself what is truth, find a, a brotherhood. And through it, he faces challenges. So challenges of whether it's fundamentalism or even day-to-day -day violence. And so that novel explores those themes. And, and, and hopefully, I, I think that I've painted a picture of northern Nigeria that is not very commonly heard of you know, 
in, in, in popular conversation but definitely globally. Definitely very appealing. Okay, this book debuts in Nigeria in November, right? Yes, it and does. And how come you had to debut first in America before here? Actually, it so in the U.S., the, the, the nomination the novel got was something called the Indie Introduced List. It's independent bookstores in the U.S. select 10 books, which they will promote throughout a season in the U.S., and it's very competitive. Now, they get books that will come out the season after. So it comes out in winter, spring 2016 in the U.S., yeah. but in Nigeria, it comes out in November. How much time? It comes out in November. So it comes out first in Nigeria, actually. Okay. Yes. It's all right. Now, um, you have a way with your, ti your, your titles, your book titles, Flying, Born on Tuesday. Were you born on Tuesday? No, I was not. I was okay. born on a Thursday. A Thursday. So you're going to have to do another one, Born on a Thursday. <laughs> when I'm writing so my memoirs, perhaps. Oh, okay. So how do you pick your ti book titles? My, well, for, for my story, when I'm writing short stories, um, often the titles come to me after. Uh, because for me, many times a story comes with an idea, and then I expand upon that idea. And usually, the strongest theme informs the the the, 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 the title. For the book, um, there's a lot that goes into that. So my book title was a back and forth between me, my Nigerian publishers, my American publishers, and there was a lot of fights. My initial titles were rejected, and we had to look into the book and actually do like almost like a big brainstorming session and arrive at that that title which i like so that was the second one was a collaborative effort um yeah but but titles are not very easy for me they i have to think about it a lot and many times i get it wrong but uh that's a good thing with having a publisher and editor you can always talk these things through with titles with books an author doesn't always have complete control over the title because the editor has a say, the publisher has a say in what the title is. You, go, you know, you go back and forth. Okay, well, at least you yeah. get it done. Yes. And your titles are always captivating. I tried to go Thank through you. your um, uh, titles. Now, do you still want to, at any point, practice law? Well, um, it's very hard to run away from being a lawyer, actually, because everything you do, there's always a way that law creeps in. and and. It seems that once you become a lawyer, you breathe and, and eat law. But do I want to go back to the conventional practice of law in Nigeria? I'm not sure I do, no. I'm too <laughs> restless to stay in court for two years. <laughs> I put it to you. <laughs> All right, so how do you relax? Where do you want to relax? Well, I relax with a book, often. I relax with a book. Sometimes I like to watch a few movies and then listen to a lot of music. All right, so when you listen to music, what type do you listen to? I like rock, alternative rock, pop rock, folk rock. All right, thank you so much <laughs> for coming on the show. And thank you, um, it's been I'm, a pleasure. All right, I'm going to go back to my colleagues and my friends, my brother, my sister, and see if they have something like um, a close to rock to rock you out. And you're going to sit here <laughs> with me and have it out. So the man. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sadly, we have uh, a lot to rock with. Yes, because certainly for me, Nathan, I want to have a hold 